Welcome to learning how to count. Now that we've seen the basics of probability, uh, we have to figure out how to count these darn things because that really is the biggest obstacle in probability is um, figuring out a systematic way to count up all the possible total outcomes and then all the good outcomes as well, making sure not to miss any or count any more than once. So I know it sounds silly that we're going to learn how to count all over again, but we pretty much are. Uh, the first fundamental counting rule is that if you're um, you know doing a sequence of events and the first one can hap happen so many ways and the second one can happen so many other ways then the total number of ways that it can all happen is just m times n and we'll see this with a tree diagram uh, a little bit later the factorial symbol the exclamation point does not mean that it's an excited four. Four, right? It means it's uh, four times three times two times one. Basically, factorial means uh, the number times every integer value smaller than it down to one, right? So seven factorial is just seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. And then by definition, we had to define zero factorial to equal one. The factorial rule is just uh, talking about permutations and again we'll see permutations and combinations uh, during uh, this uh, lecture but a permutation just means order matters and, and that that's key is to realize that a permutation is when order matters and then a combination is when it doesn't matter so here's an example let's say you have three items to choose from and you can choose them in any order we can call them a b and c if you want to think about it uh, say you've got uh, three different trophies a b and c and you want to decide how you want to arrange them on your mantle so order matters so how many ways can you do that well these are all the different ways you can rearrange those three letters right a b c a c b etc 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 and you can see very plainly there are six of them now i'm going to introduce you guys to the dash technique and basically the dash technique is a way to help you uh, count better and uh, what you do is you put a dash down for every decision you have to make everything you have to do like if you're you know rolling three die uh, dice you would have three dashes if you're uh, picking five cards from a deck of cards you would have five dashes right if you're picking out uh, four colored marbles out of a bag there are four dashes and here because you have to choose three things to order you have three dashes now, how many choices do you have for that first trophy? And hopefully you're all screaming three, because you've got three choices, right? Now that you've chosen a trophy, let's say you chose, chose trophy B, doesn't matter, but now that you chose one, how many choices do you have left for the next trophy? Two, and then now there's only one left for the last. You always multiply your dashes together, and then there is your six. See how that's six? Six total ways that can be done. That's the dash technique. It's going to just help you organize your thoughts and uh, figure out how to count these things. It also, by the way, ends up being three factorial, right? Here's another example. Let's say you have um, five items to choose from. So now you have five cho trophies to choose from, but you still only have room for three. So you need to choose three of those trophies. So how many dashes are we going to have? Are we going to have five or are we going to have three? That's right. We're going to have three because we're making three choices, right? The number of dashes isn't equal to how many things we're choosing from. It's the number of choices we're making, right? So we have to choose three. So there's our three dashes. How many choices do you have for your first trophy? You have five. And then the next trophy? That's right. Four. And then the last one? Correct. Three. And again, you multiply those together, and now you have 60 different ways you can pick and rearrange uh, three trophies. I'm not going to write those all out like I did on the previous slide. So here's the permutations rule formalized. You'll um, hear and see uh, NPR. Uh, sometimes it's written uh, this way. It'll be a permutation of N choose R many things means the same thing N choose R uh, some books I've seen it do uh, N choose X many things they use X instead of an R who, who cares it's all the same thing right the idea is you have N many things and you're choosing R of them and this is our formula N over N minus R factorial so in our previous example right we had five trophies and uh, we chose three 
So that would be a five pick three or five factorial over five minus three is two factorial. And five factorial is five, four, three, two, one. And then two factorial is two, one. And the, the twos and the ones cancel. And look what you're left with. Five times four times three, which is exactly what we had with our dash technique. Hey, pretty cool, huh? There's also a slightly different permutations rule, and this is when you're choosing items um, that are identical. You can't distinguish apart from them. Now, before, all five of your trophies looked different. You could tell uh, one from the other. This would be something like uh, take the letters of Mississippi and rearrange them. Well, if I swap places with these two S's, it's not a new word, right? It's not a new arrangement because I can't tell the difference between one S and the other. Just like if I swap that S and that S, it's going to look the same, and etc., etc., etc. So when that's the case, the uh, formula is very simply n factorial, the number of things you have, divided by the number of repeats. So for Mississippi, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's 11 factorial over, well there's one, two, three, there's four i's, so I have to have four factorial for the i's, there's four s's, so I need four factorial for the s's, and then there's two p's, and technically you would have a one factorial for the, um, the m, but one factorial is silly because it's just one. But that's how that formula would work. Let's look at an example where they're all worked out for us. So let's say you're going to rearrange the letters Bob, B-O-B. And I put one of them in red just so you can see how they're different. But you can realize, hopefully by looking at this, that if they weren't different colors, this Bob and this Bob look the same. Just like BBO looks just like BBO, right? Because now that I've colored them, you can't tell that they were red. And then these two are the same. And here are the examples if all three letters were different, right? If, if instead of B-O-B -B we had A-B-C, you can see um, the, the permutation of six of them. But when they're looking identical, you get these pairs. And so if we use that formula, we would have three factorial, because there's three total things, divided by two factorial, because two of them were similar, right? And we get three, two, one over two, one. Right, those cancel, and we just get three. And according to our colors over here, we really only have three different ones because then the other pairs look the same. Okay, so that's the uh, the permutation rule when you have um, indistinguishable, right, identical items. A combination. So we're still learning how to count, but a combination is when we're picking r many things from a set of n. So just like before. You know, we've, we've got a, a group of n many things, and we're going to choose r of them. But then in this case, order no longer matters. So that's the big difference between permutations and combinations, is when we have a combination, order does not matter. And what I mean is if you chose, uh, you know, go back to your trophies, if you chose a, b, c as a set of trophies versus a, c, b, versus C, A, B, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Those are all considered the same outcome, right? Because they or rearranging them no longer gives you a distinct outcome. And um, let's think of it this way. Instead of choosing three trophies to put on your mantle, you're choosing three trophies to throw away. Does it matter in which order you choose those three trophies, right? If you chose A, then B, then C, versus choosing A, then C, then B, have you really chosen a different set of trophies to throw away? And the answer is no. So you can see how order doesn't matter in that case because you're thinking of it kind of a set of trophies. So anytime you're choosing things that are going to be a set of things, that's usually a, a, a road sign, a telltale giveaway that order doesn't matter in that case. And that's what this is talking about, permutations versus combinations. Now let's go back to those five trophies. And let's list out, as remember we saw, there were 60 different permutations. And what I've done here is I've, I've started with kind of a, a, a parent set 
and then all the ways those can be rearranged, right? So we can see that all these in lowercase are just A, B, C in different orders, right? These are all A, B, D in different orders. These are all A, D, E in different orders, and so on and so far. I just I just filled out one here, and you could fill out the rest really if you've got nothing better to do. But can we all hopefully agree and visualize that each of these uh, kind of parent sets will have five rearrangements underneath it for a total of six things that all have the same three letters, right? So when order does matter and um, BAC is different from BCA, then we get a grand total of 60 things on this on this page. But when order doesn't matter, you know, when we're taking those three trophies and we're just throwing them away, then this entire list ends up really just all looking the same and we really just get this one parental kind of um, grouping and same thing over here is this all ends up looking the same and these all end up counting as the same and every single one of these groups of six gets reduced down to just one thing and instead of 60 we're back down to just uh, five right one of your five one of I'm oh, sorry ten we're, we're down to ten so with this combination, uh, in, when order doesn't matter, instead of 60 total things, we have 10 total things. If we look at the formula, we can see how that works. So in uh, the example on the previous slide, we had um, our N was 5, right? we had 5 total trophies, and our R was 3, we were choosing 3 of them. So I'll put it over here. This is going to be 5 factorial over 5 minus 3, right? So that's 2 factorial. And then the r factorial times 3 factorial. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 over 2, 1, and then 3, 2, 1. The 3, 2, 1's cancel. We're left with the 5 and the 4 and divided by the 2 times 1, right? So 20 divided by 2, and there's the 10, the 10 groups, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Because we've taken those 60 things and we figured out how many ways can each group of three be rearranged. That's where that R factorial comes from, right? R was how many things we chose, which in this case was three factorial, which was six, because again, with our three dashes, we had three choices for the first, then two, then one, right? And that's the six different ways that we can just rearrange ABD, and the six different ways that we can rearrange ACE, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And since all of those rearrangements no longer count as a separate outcome, we divide by that 6, we divide by that r squared, and that's how we get a combination. Now the nice thing is, is that technology does all this for us. We don't have to worry about these formulas. But you do have to recognize when you have a combination and when you have a permutation, because then you need to know, uh, you know which buttons to push on your technology. So you do need to be able to recognize when order matters and when order doesn't matter, but then after that the technology does it all for you. Here's an example of where order does matter because when we're talking about um, a sequence of digits, a byte, zeros and ones, uh, all they are is zeros and ones, but you put a one in a different place and all of a sudden that means a different thing. So that's where you get two choices for each of the eight spots, right? Remember, this is uh, back to the dash technique. There's my, my byte of eight numbers and there's two choices for each. It's either a zero or a one. So that's where two to the eighth comes from. Here's another example. You've got uh, a quiz that asks students to rearrange presidents in the chronological order, and they've got six presidents. So does order matter? Well, yeah, if you're asking them to rearrange presidents, and they have to choose all six anyway, then order is going to matter. So they have six choices for the first, and then five, four, three, two, one, and that ends up being 720 different ways that they can uh, rearrange six things, and if so, if they randomly guess, there's only one correct order, so the probability of guessing correctly is good over total, 1 over 720, or a very, 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 very small number. Here's an example that involves com uh, combination. Uh, a lotto, where you just have to pick six numbers and they have to match the six numbers that are drawn, and order doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter in what order the numbers come up, just as long as they match the same six numbers you have. Now, this is slightly different, of course, if you've got one of those lotteries that has like a Powerball thing where the last number has to match. Well, then the first 
x number of numbers, whether it's 6 or 7 or whatever, is a combination. And then that last thing ends up being a permutation. And it just becomes a two-stage process. And we'll see um, how to deal with two-stage processes and, and more complicated ways of counting in one of our other videos to come. Let's uh, look at a few more examples and just make sure that you guys can figure out uh, when order matters or not. So uh, let's say there are uh, 30 people uh, in your group and you're going to choose five of them uh, to uh, send away to a weekend retreat. Is order going to matter or not? And hopefully you all say no, it's a combination. That's going to be a 30 choose five combination because I'm just choosing five to send to a retreat. Okay, um, we still have 30 people and uh, we're going to choose three of them to be, uh, you know, CEO, um, CFO, and uh, COO or whatever. Does order matter in that case? And hopefully you're all saying yes, yes it does. That would be a 30 pick three. Um, because let's say you chose um, Bill, Tom, and um, Jane. Well, in that order, right, we've got CEO, CFO, and COO. But if we chose them, Jane, Bob, and Tom, now we have different CEOs and COOs and CFOs, right? So order matters. Um, let's say you own 100 books and you're going to take 10 of them on vacation with you. Permutation or combination? Well, does order matter? Visualize choosing the 10 books. All right, you got your 10 books. Put them in a bag, shuffle them up, pour them out on the ground. Now they're in a different order. Does that give you a different result to your experiment? And the experiment was taking 10 books with you on vacation. Do you now have a different set of books to take with you on vacation? And the answer is no. So it's a combination. right? If you had 100 books and you were going to arrange 10 of them on a shelf, now order matters. So it's really about uh, reading into the, the question. Does order matter or not is all about paying attention to what the question is asking you to figure out. And then for after this, once we figure out how to count, then we'll figure out how to do probability. Because remember, as a refresher, probability is going to be good over total. So we need to know how to count both. And also, with all of these um, you know, combinations and permutations, we can always do the dash technique as well.